Hi, so today we're going to take a look at how we can play videos in Godot 4. So this can be used for cutscenes where a video just plays and once the video is over it moves on to another scene. Or this can be used for stuff like animated menu backgrounds. Or we can even show it in 3D space and have it as a screen that is just floating in the air and displaying a video. So let's take a look at how to do this. Okay, so first thing, you're going to want yourself a video, whichever one you want to display. In my case, I used Steamboat Willy, which recently entered the public domain, and you're gonna make sure that it's in an OGV file extension. OGV is a Thera file extension and you can convert pretty much any video into it. If you don't have a video editing software that can convert into OGV, just get a converter online and you should be fine to get a conversion done pretty quickly. Most videos you have are probably going to be in different file endings, but Godot doesn't support other files right now. Now what can we actually do with this? First of all, this is a regular video still, so we can, if we open this in file manager here real quick. We can play this on something like Windows Media Player. You can see here it plays fine, though Media Player always has a bit of stutter on it for me. What we can do within Godot is we just go in here at a child node video stream player, which is a control node. That means we have these little anchors and everything and can position it in a control scene, whatever, however we like. In this case, I'll just set it to take up the full screen or the full space uh, I already set out for it in with its parent node. And then over here, we can set the stream to our OGV file. We can manipulate the audio. We can set it to autoplay, which is probably a good idea for a cutscene. If we're doing a cutscene like we're trying to do right now, then we're not going to loop it. We want it to eventually end, right? We do want to expand because we'd want it to actually use up the space inside of its control node. If we don't do that, let me just show for comparison. If we don't expand, it's just going to be in its little corner in the upper left and be as large as the video is. If we do expand, it's a bit neater because it actually uses up the entire space. Though it does stretch, so maybe make sure that your video actually fits into what you're trying to do, at least for the most part. Okay, now that is playing video in the most basic form, but what would we do with this? If we're playing video and we want to use it as a cutscene, we can use the finished signal, connect that, and once the video is done, we can move on to another scene. So we can say, get tree, change scene to packed, and go to far, next scene equals Preload Willy in 3D dot scene. Put that in here. Next scene. And now, once the video finishes playing, it would transition to the next scene. We aren't actually going to wait for this because this is quite a long video. We can also use this as the menu background. Let's go in here. So, here we have just the menu on an empty background. Basically, we can do the same thing here video stream player. This is, like I said, a UI node, so it's pretty easy to insert into any user interface. In this case, we also don't need the, to worry about it finishing, because if it's a menu, we want it to never stop. So we can set it to looping, we keep it on expand and autoplay, and put in our video. And simple enough, here's our menu and our video in the background. If we want to transition to something like a cutscene, one thing we want to take care of is to make sure that it doesn't take us forever to uh, load once we get there. Especially with cutscenes, we usually want them to play immediately, as soon as we reach a specific spot. So for example, here I have a little scene where we have this Godot player, we have a little flag we want to reach, and when we reach it, we want to play a cutscene. So if we have something like this, then what we can do is, of course, transition to our cutscene we made over here, Willy cutscene. So let's just do var cutscene path Willy cut 
scene.tscn. Hopefully there aren't any typos in there, otherwise it's not going to work, but we'll find out soon. Now here's the thing we want to do with this time. I didn't preload this because preload does mean that if you have a larger video, if you have something that's going to uh, take a while or be high quality, it's going to cause a lot of waiting time. And we maybe don't want that, or maybe we would want to only do that if we have a loading screen. In this case, we can just load while we're playing. So we can have a ready function here, which just says resource loader dot load threaded request and our cutscene path. Okay, now with this, what basically happens is while we're playing after the ready function, so right at the beginning, while we're playing in the background, another thread is going to be loading our willy cutscene. And hopefully by the time we reach the flag, it's already going to be loaded and there won't be a wait time at all. Or at the very least, there's going to be much less wait time because we've had some time to prepare. It depends on how large your video is. My video actually is uh, long but very low resolution, so it's not really a problem in this case. But if you have like a two minute high definition or even 4K video, it's going to take a while. What we want to do actually here is I'm going to the area 2D. I already had this connected once before. I'm just going to disconnect it and connect it again. Okay, so once a body is entered, our player is the body. So once the player enters our area 2D for the flag, we connect over here and we can say var cutscene equals resource loader dot load threaded get. So here we did the threaded request. We just, uh, we don't actually get it yet. We just say we would please like you to start loading this. Now here we say, give me whatever you loaded already. And if it's not finished loading, then at this point, the game is going to stop. It's going to load and then it's going to continue. So you can still get the game uh, into wait mode here in the end after all. But hopefully by the time you get to a loading zone like this, the actual area is already loaded so you can just uh, move on and teleport to the next scene. Okay, now we can just do the usual get tree, change scene to packed. Um, since we're in a callback, uh, in a signal here, it's safer to go with a call deferred, otherwise it's going to complain. So this just makes sure it only actually changes the scene once you're in a safe program position to do that. And cutscene, variable from here. And now, assuming I didn't have any typos in there, let me see what were the controls for this. Whoop. There we go. We reach the flag and the cutscene starts playing. So that's a pretty uh, simple way to get a cutscene preloaded and make sure it doesn't have any buffering issues at that point. Now, last thing we wanted to look at, we have a 3D world here. And in this 3D world, we would like to have a display. Now, first of all, we want a sprite 3D. This is going to be what actually shows our stuff. I'm just gonna call it screen here. So we know what it is. We can move this over here somewhere. It doesn't really matter. Then we want a sub viewport. The sub viewport is what's originally going to contain our video. And then this viewport we can render to our sprite to display it in the 3D world. So let's say, let's go for video stream player, put it in here and it can have Let's see, do we want it to loop? It doesn't really matter. We can just set it to the usual stuff, I guess. We can set it to full rectangle. Since we're in a sub viewport, it's not going to display properly in here unless you make it uh, into a uh, sub scene. Like you can, you could do the whole um, save branch as scene and uh, edit it elsewhere. Then you would actually be see what you're doing. But it doesn't matter since I already know what to do here. We're not really modifying much. We're just keeping it on full screen and uh, putting some settings in, putting in Steamboat Willy. So our sub viewport here should probably have a size that reflects our video. That's easiest to work with then. So let's see what size is the video anyway. Four eighty by three sixty. So let's say four eighty and 
360. That is 460. There you go, 480 by 360, that's our viewport, that way the video can render in full without taking up more space than it needs. And then on our sprite here, we can just click on new viewport texture, select our sub viewport, and in theory, this should also be working then. There we go, there it is. The video is playing in 3D space, we can jump around, we can walk through the video. And we can move this around, place it wherever we want. And this is pretty much all there is to it. These are all of the cases I thought of uh, showing off here. So this will be all for today. Bye.